Hello everyone, this is Andrea Clayton. I'm presenting my Teach One for HAP 725 at George Mason University, taught by Farooq Alemi, PhD. My topic is the risk-adjusted p-charts, specifically week five, question three. The question asks, following data were obtained on post-surgical infection rates. Are we having more infections than expected from the patient's conditions? But let us back up a little bit and talk about the risk-adjusted p-chart. It is used to detect process improvement, which is beyond the expectation of patient conditions. It is not the same as a p-chart in that it does not compare historical patterns, but rather compares outcomes to expected outcomes given patient conditions. The needs for a risk-adjusted p-chart are outcome data over time and patient risks data. In other words, expected outcome for patient condition. And in this regard, it would be infection. These can be given by a severity index or patient self-rating. Assumptions of a risk-adjusted p-chart are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. The sample is not rare, events are independent, and the probability of events are changing in rates over time. And here's the same table of data, but now put into an Excel worksheet. We have the week, weeks one through six, the risk of infection per each week, as well as the number infected. The first thing we need to do is create a sample column. This is going to be the count of the patients in a given time period, and in this time period is week one, two, through six. The formula, the first blue arrow, is equal count B2 through G2, which gives us the number six. And you will do this for each week. The next column we need to create is the rate of observed infection. This is the number infected divided by the number of cases or your sample number. So in this case, we're using H2, which is 6, divided by I2, which is 6. So your rate of observed infection for week 1 is 1. J is the observed rate of infection column completed. The next column to create is expected infection. This is an average of risk of infection for a time period. And this is expected based on patient's risk. So we're gonna take the average of all of the risk of infection for the week. So for the first number, we're going to say equals average B2 through G2, and you will do that for each week. The next project is to create the expected deviation, but before you can do that, you must get some numbers to do the deviation formula. So the expected deviation is your variation around the mean. First, you want to find the expected values. You want to multiply the patient risk, so for the first week it's found in B2, in time period, which is week one, multiply that by one minus the risk. So in this example, we're using week six. We're going to take B7, which is 0 0.3. We're going to multiply that by 1 minus B7. That gives us 0 0.21. You're going to do this for each week and just make a small column down here below your, your table. So you're going to do it each week 
Fill in your columns here. Then we're, we need to get the sum of expected values for each time period. And in this example, we're using week one. We're going to take equals sum B13 through G13. And this is the finished sum column right here where the blue arrow is. Now to calculate the expected deviation, we're going to take the square root of the sum that we just created divided by the count of patient risk of infection for the time period. It sounds very wordy. So for week one, we're going to take the square root of 0 0.84 divided by the count of B2 through G2. That will give us 0 0.15, and we will do that equation for each week. This is your finished column of expected deviation. Next, we need to calculate the upper control limit and the lower control limits. For the upper control limit, we're going to take the expected infection and we're going to add the T value multiplied by the expected deviation. The T values will change based on your sample number. The table for T values can be found online, but for the T values here, for cases with six sample size is 2.571. For the sample sizes of four or three, you're going to use a t-value of 3.182. So your first upper control limit will be calculated by using K2, which is your expected infection, plus 2.571, which is your t-value, multiplied by L2, which is your expected deviation. It's 1.19. Now, as you can see here, with your sample sizes being 4, 4, and 3, you're going to make sure that you use the t-value of 3.182 to do this calculation. Now, for the lower control limit, this will be the expected infection minus your t-value times your expected deviation. Here the TV, T value is subtracted and you will do the same T values as you did before. So in sample sizes of 6 you will use 2.571. In sample sizes of 4 or 3 you will use a T value of 3.182. And here is the completed column of the lower control values. Next, you want to replace any upper control value, limit value of greater than one, and lower control limits, which are negative. So you replace the ones greater than one with one, because they cannot be greater than one and you will replace the lower control limits which are negative with zero because we cannot have a negative. Next we need to chart the data. So if you highlight these five columns and insert a line graph, it's going to give you more lines and more data than you need but we'll go back and fix this. 
So we're going to take out the expected infection rate and the expected deviation. We're going to be left with the upper control limit, the lower control limit, and the observed rate. In the graph, we're going to change the control limits to red with no markers. We're going to add observation marks to our observation line. We're going to title the x-axis here, time period, the y-axis, probability of infection. And this will be your finished product of your risk-adjusted p-chart. Now for interpretation, are we having more infections than expected from the patient's conditions? So here's your upper control limit. Here's your observed rate of infection, your lower control limit. So your observed rate is falling within the, the control limits. The answer is no. Rate of infection is within expectations given patient risks. Thank you for listening. I hope this helped.